the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Community is a powerful thing. It forms us for good and for healing, like AA groups or scout troops or our Emmaus groups. Certainly, community can foster chaos and hatred. All we have to do is tune into the news, and we know that. But that's not what Christian community is about. The Christian life is not about chaos and hatred. It's about loving one another, healing, and having an open heart. It's about following Jesus. We've all been part of a community from the moment of our birth. Our first community was our family. It shaped us at a brainstem level. At their best, families teach us to love, to trust, and to have compassion. For me, in addition to my family, I learned about community from summer camp, friends, school, my sorority, my ministry in prison, and my community organizing. Having said that, the strongest formation has come from the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life and the church. We as Christians are all about community because we are formed in the image of God. And the very core of God's identity is communal. Three persons dancing and relating to one another in love, creating an identity, a whole, that is larger than the sum of its parts. A community is always larger than its members. Both, both, both Jesus and Paul seem to understand this and literally stake their lives on forming a new community. Both lived, suffered, and died for the sake of uniting us in, a, in love to form a whole larger than the parts. When we come together as a Christian community, we act as one body, stronger and more compassionate because we are together. When writing to the Hebrews, Paul said, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to, stra <clears throat> to strangers, for by doing that, some have enter entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you yourself were in prison with them. Wow. That's pretty powerful. It is compassion and oneness with another. Paul's new community was to be a compassionate community formed in love. And love begets hospitality and openness of spirit and the strangers or outcasts to whom we show hospitality may in return show us the face of angels. Community for Paul was not just tending to one another. It was actually stepping into another's life and inhabiting their world. We don't just visit people in prison, an intellectual exercise. Rather, at the depth of our soul, we take on their sense of bondage, feeling what it is like to lose our freedom. When we are in community with the hungry, or the homeless, or the lost, or the sad, or the people who come to our grocery store on Monday afternoons, 
we experience their desperation and perhaps even their embarrassment at their life circumstance. It is an awareness of community that we have with them. Paul strove to form people, the people of God, to live the community that Jesus sought to grow, one of love and compassion, one that's not ego-driven nor exclusionary. True community doesn't just happen. It's work. Living in relationship isn't easy. We all know this from from our family life, our friendships, or even in being in church together when we don't always agree. Sometimes, sometimes it's easier not to open ourselves to love and be loved. Sometimes it's easier to pull back to live a less engaged life. Sometimes it's easier not to be compassionate, to let our needs, our ego, be in charge. Yet, friends, that's not the way for followers of Jesus. You see, Jesus never traveled alone, but always in community with a group of men and women. When he sent out disciples, he sent them out in pairs. The parables he told, whether about banquet etiquette, as we heard this morning, or the things he did, like publicly healing a woman on the Sabbath, were about living together in community. It is our common life that feeds us and draws us closer to God. And it is our common life with its joys and struggles that's a sign of hope to our struggling world. Living this way is living on holy ground. I suspect we don't always think about that. When we go to school or come to church or spend time with family and friends or even give money to help people in need, we are walking on holy ground. Both Paul and Jesus knew that it is through community that we come to see ourselves and each other as a child of God, cherished and beautifully made. It is a place where barriers are broken down and we are stretched. Curtis Almquist, a member of the Society of St. John the Evangelist and Episcopal monastic community, wrote, community is not just living around another person, but living in another person. This person whom you may be so quick to discount or disown or reject, you are this person. This person who gets under your skin belongs there. This is the healing of our judgmental faculties to see ourselves in the face and form of another, to come to love the other as we love ourselves. And I might add, love ourselves and others as God loves us. When Jesus told the parable of the wedding banquet, he was painting a picture of a new community, one that comes together without thought of self or reward. The Christ-like community is a place of nourishment and respect for all. All are welcome. Jesus invites us to especially welcome those for whom we have less warm feelings. For they grow us and help us to recognize each and every one of us is lovable and is to be honored 
as, an, as the image of God. We all know, we all know that we live in a fractious time. Our communities have become more insular. We're less likely to engage with people we don't know or who don't agree with us or we might not like very much. When we look outside the communities we construct, we don't see fellow travelers. We don't see that if we were to enlarge our circle, we may be entertaining angels. I know that this kind of community can be unsettling and even threatening. Yet Jesus told his followers to do just that, to invite into their homes, into their lives, people who make them uncomfortable. Now I wonder, what, what would it be like for us to truly live the community that Jesus envisioned, loving people we don't understand or like? I confess, I know that I would find it challenging. But maybe I would also get a glimpse of an unexpected angel. We at St. Stephen's are at a particular moment in our life together. We are reforming our community as a new rector joins our common life. My prayer for all of us is that we grow ever closer to being the community Jesus and Paul envisioned as we welcome John Roars into our life.